Hello, this is Ken. Today we'll build a simple game using FlowLab. First, we'll go to My Games and click the New Game button. Let's start by adding a name and setting the screen size. We'll make it just a bit taller. Now let's add some objects to our first level. We can click anywhere and choose Create. Let's make this one our lander object. We want it to be movable and solid and to trigger collisions when it hits things. Also, let's make its forward direction point upwards. Right now, it's just a plain square, so let's make it look more like a lander. We'll need some ground too. Ground shouldn't move, but we will want it to be solid. Now that we have a ground object, we can just clone it to fill out the terrain. Okay, how about a better background color for our level? At any time, we can test our progress by running the game with the Run button or just by hitting the escape key. The escape key also returns us to the editor. I think we need a landing pad, so let's create one. We want it to be solid so that we land on top instead of passing through it. Now we have enough elements for a simple game, but it isn't much fun yet. Let's add some game logic to fix that. First, our lander needs some controls for thrust and steering. Let's add a keyboard trigger to drive our ship. For upward thrust, we use the spacebar. In order to move our ship around, we'll add a motor from the components. Let's grab a number to set how much power the motor produces. We'll set this value to 12 and give it a short descriptive name. Let's connect all these together. The space key's down output gets connected to our thrust value. This value's output then gets connected to the input of our motor's Y axis. Now when we press our space key, the value 12 will be sent to our motor's Y axis. Let's try it out. Okay, that's better. Let's add some thrust for left and right, too. Now we can steer the lander, so let's add some solid areas to prevent it from leaving our screen. That's better. Now we can land on the pad, so let's make it a bit more challenging by randomizing the position of the landing pad. The once trigger will only be fired once when the level begins. We can randomize our position by sending a random number into our X position property. We know our game is 10 tiles wide, so we'll pick a number between 0 and 9 and set our position inputs to use grid measurements instead of pixels. Now each time we start the game, the landing pad is in a new spot. We can randomize our lander's start position the same way. A little bit of warning at the start of the game will help, so let's not have the game start automatically. 
We can display a short welcome message and disable the lander's movement until the player clicks a start button. Next, our lander's rocket engine needs some attention. We can start by making a little smoke puff and then have our lander emit them. That looks a little crazy, so let's have them fade out a bit. If we look at our library and open up the smoke object, we can have the size and transparency decrease over time. First, we'll add an expression behavior, which is just a simple arithmetic expression. We'll set our top value, A, to 80%, and subtract 8 from it when the expression is evaluated. We'll send the resulting value to our size and transparency properties, as well as storing the new smaller value back into A. That looks better, but to make it more challenging, let's add a fuel limit. A bar will display how much fuel is remaining. We can filter the value leaving the fuel gauge, and when it drops below 1, we can switch off the motor inputs, but let's make sure they always start back in the on position. Finally, we need some way to complete the level by crashing into the ground or touching down on the landing pad. Collision triggers will fire when we collide with a specific object. For both ground and landing pad collisions, we'll trigger an alert message and restart the level when the player clicks. To finish it off, we can add a score that increments when you land successfully. It gets zeroed out otherwise. To make sure the lander object is kept intact when the level restarts, we'll set it to keep on restart. This will ensure that the score value is persistent. All that's left to do now is playtest our new game and send a link to our friends. This game demo and others can be found at flowlab.io. So check them out or just sign up for free and start making your own. Thanks for watching.